Welcome to our Christmas special. But wait a minute. There's something missing, isn't there? Let's see what we can do about that. Well, it's looking a little bit better, but it's still not there. Let's try one more time. So we now have the tree and it's a beautiful tree and it's a real tree, not a fake one. It's a real tree. You have to water it and everything. Thanks, Donna and Pete. It's definitely getting better. We've got the lights along here, but we're still missing something. Hi, I'm David. And I'm Rachel. And I'm Chris. And welcome to Leisure Bit. And today we've got our Christmas special for you. So let's get cracking. Leisure Bit is the way to go with David, Rachel and Roxy. Let's hit the road and explore. Hello and welcome to the Christmas special and if you've been watching the channel for a while you'll know that the three of us were sat here this time last year and I want to say thank you for inviting me back. You're more than welcome Chris. It's good to have you back Chris. Thank is you, that man. a new jumper this year? It is a new jumper, yes. Oh, oh, last oh. year it said Brussels sprout fan. I am still a Brussels sprout fan but I'm also an Everton fan so I try hard not to wear red which is a little bit tough at Christmas so this is a predominantly blue Christmas jumper. So I have questions for you but this year questions from your subscribers and people that follow along and people that enjoy your journey and we're going to crack on with them straight away because we've got a load to get through and we want to make it shorter than last year's video so first question are you ready i'm ready this comes from mo it says hi david and rachel who has the final say on which site to visit and what is the number one requirement that a site must have david so final say probably me uh, but Rachel's great at giving some ideas on places to go. I'd say probably I have the final say. <laughs> I'm not getting involved in this. You can fight, fight it out amongst yourselves. David normally comes up with ideas and I normally disclude things. <laughs> Good. And my number one requirement for sites are the facilities and somewhere nice for rocks to play. So our next question. And this is for Vans for the Memories. And the team there have said, Hi both. As a fellow YouTuber, my question is, do you video each trip? Or, like me, are there times that you just do not want to think about having to pick up the camera? Uh, I'd also like to know, who does the editing? Is it shared or just one of you? Thank you and Merry Christmas. That's from M. Rachel. There are trips that are ones that we don't film for the channel. And that's mainly because they're personal to us, if we've met some friends. So it just depends on the circumstances. Sometimes it's nice as well just to put the camera down. So you'll sometimes see breaks in things we film as well. But sometimes it's nice just to have a chat off camera. And when it comes to the editing, I've got to say 100% it's not me. <laughs> it's David. David, as you won't be surprised, does all the techie stuff. <laughs> Keep trying to get better at it as well. I think you're getting better at it. I do. I do think oh, if you watch a video from a couple of years ago yeah. to watching a video now, the, yeah. the difference is night and day. All the gear, no, no idea. idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. The next question is, what would your dream camper van tour be in your CV20 and where would you go? Either here, in the UK or in Europe? And that comes from Daniel Russell. Thanks, Daniel. So this one is quite easy for me and we are going to do it, but... It's going to be in a couple of years' time. Dave and I got married in France at a very special place, which was a chateau that my mum owned. And we plan to go back on our 20th wedding anniversary in the camper van and stay there. So it's a really special one. I'm looking forward to it. When we used to go there, we used to go to a place called Lake Vassivier. Or lack of a severe, if you're French. Um, and, <laughs> we, uh, David, yeah, we. Yeah. We, <laughs> yeah. we, we. we. Um, and used to see the camper vans parked up at the lakeside. At some point, I'd love to come back here and do that, because it just looked magical. And going back to Mum's house. Absolutely. OK, on to the next question, which is from uh, Daniel Russell. And he says, what's the best place you've been in your CV20? And what's the worst? And there's only one person I trust with this answer, Rachel. OK, so I am going to start off with the worst place, just to get that over and done with. It was always going to be the one place which was Kendall Spittle site. For me, 
I just didn't like it. I didn't mind that site, but I think it was complete contrast to where we'd been to earlier in the trip. Uh, and I'll tell you why. We went from kind of things like uh, Pier Cottage, Cottage, which looked over the lake, and then we went to a site that was opposite Morrison's and things, but they did breakfasts for three ninety nine. Happy days. What's not to like? My favourite, definitely, for the experience has got to be the Kip and Nook. We've been there twice. Just, it's camping, but on a different level. And you've got a video coming up about the Kip and Nook. We have, because we went for Rachel's birthday right. last week. Yes. So you can see more on the uh, exclusive video, which is coming up very shortly on the channel. Right, let's move on to the next question. Okay. This one is from uh, a gamer. And it says, hi, David and Rachel. Uh, I watch on a lot of channels. They do power banks, bikes, and all sorts of reviews of things that they've been sent. I've noticed you don't do that. Do you have any plans to change that in the future? It's a really interesting question, that one. And I know lots of people do. One thing I wanted to do is do something a little bit different. I want it to be absolutely the stuff we want to do. So do you get offered things? Uh, we have been offered things, yes. Because the first thing you think, well, I haven't got offered anything. Right. Uh, but yes, we have been offered things and a variety of things. What I wanted the channel to be about is specifically things we want. If somebody approached me, for example, and we were wanting to fit something in the van and it happened to be the thing we wanted to fit, worth collaborating with. But what I don't want to do is just review things for the sake of reviewing things got bigger plans for the channel and this year we got slightly side sidetracked on those plans and i'd love to get back to the original vision which was to do something a little bit different that other people weren't doing reviewing scent products doesn't fit into that at this point in time so that's why we're not doing it but it's fantastic people have reached out and no issues with anyone that does Thanks, David. Can I, as someone who, who doesn't have a YouTube channel, can I can I give you an outsider's opinion? Of course. If I if I follow a channel, and all of a sudden they're flogging something to me, I immediately lose credibility for that channel. Yeah. So I think I, I don't have a YouTube channel. I don't understand how the mon monetary side of it works, or gifting, or having to put adverts and things on. I think there's times where it works really well, and I've seen in the past you've donated yeah. things yeah. when you've been given tickets to something yeah. you would have gone to anyway. Yeah. You've donated tickets, but when I see people like, "Here's a brand new bike, and look how yeah. great it is," I'm just like, "You're being paid to say yeah. that." Like, there's another angle to it as well that if you receive something, well, if you receive a power bank that's worth a grand, um, because you've received that as a gift, it's tax declarable. So you have to pay a tax on it. And then if you're giving away that with a 70% discount off, you're probably paying more for it in tax than the actual <laughs> thing's worth. Uh, and I think for us as well, because we've got the lithium set up, we wouldn't actually need a power bank. So that wouldn't be genuine to us okay. because we haven't got the need. Some of the things we've bought, I mean, you've heard me mention about CCTV. I haven't done the video yet because we're still refining it and getting it right. I mean, it works. It works great, but it's not quite there yet. And what I don't want to do, and I've made the mistake, hands up before, of kind of talking about things till we properly check them out. And we don't want to actually talk about anything that we aren't using ourselves and would, uh, you know, wouldn't be happy to recommend. And also still happy to do the stuff for charity. Absolutely. There's certain things that touch our hearts and, you know, we want to add, add a little bit to that and we want to make a difference to people so it's not all about us it's about giving something back one philosophy I always live life by is give back more than you actually ever take and i think that's a really important thing to do and that hopefully comes across in what we do in the channel all right on to the next one so this is from die and it says hi david uh, rachel and roxy dora die i'll sort you out so i'm going to buy my first camper van new and I like the CV20 Auto version very much. It's just within my budget. I actually live just five miles from Cleveland Motorhomes, so would probably buy from them, which is actually near where we all live. I was going to say, hello, Di. <laughs> um, <laughs> thing is, I'm completely new to van life and would appreciate some guidance from more experienced, honest people. My question is, is there any other campers that you have come across since buying your CV20 that are as good or better for the same budget today's price? Thanks, David and Rachel. Stay safe, Di. That's a really interesting question, and it's a super hard one to answer for the simple fact that when we bought the CV20, it worked perfectly for what we wanted to do. We hadn't actually looked at the CV20 initially, and what I realised is that everything has a compromise, and I think this is a cracking layout um, for either one or two people. 
it's absolutely perfect obviously no good if you've got more people because there isn't any more travel seats and there's a few vans around similar now we looked at for transparency the swift uh, 122 at the time and that's a similar layout to this some of the things were a little bit more plush you get a feel for it when you go and sit in it and see how it it felt and this one just felt right what i would recommend you do is have a look around at similar ones um, we've got a little feature coming up next year that rachel's going to run and we'll show you a few of them that we think might be uh, interesting it's worth having a look go and have a sit in them you know spend five ten minutes longer if need be in the dealers mm. having a look and having a sit and feel or hire one if you can hiring one is a brilliant way to try things out and see whether it works for you. We found that when we hired the um, Contiki Sport 560. I had my heart set on that one and it just wasn't for us after after we tried it and we ended up, up with this. That's quite a change, isn't it, from a coach-built motorhome to a six-metre camper van. Um, but it works perfectly for us. It's taken us to places we won't go. I would highly recommend the CV20, but I would suggest having a look to make sure it's right for you and the autos are great. I obviously went through quite a few of the different camper vans at the motorhome show this year and there was a lot that I liked and that were really nice vans. They were more expensive than this so my personal opinion for the price today there's been nothing that's come close. Personal opinion. On to the next one. And this one is from Generation Experiences. That's uh, Nick and Jill. Hello. Hey, guys. Um, I'd like to ask, or they'd like to ask, what is or where is your favourite coastline place? What's your favourite site? Which we've already answered, so we can we can skip that one. Yeah. And one that I think is really interesting, which fellow YouTubers would you like to meet in 2024? So let's ask the first part of that question to David. I'm going to go for two here, and Ooh. they're very close together. Both of them bring back fantastic childhood memories. Whitby and Scarborough. Uh, we had an absolutely cracking visit to Scarborough this year. It was great exploring it, and it, it's surprising what memories it brings back. Whitby been to more often. Both of them are fantastic places and uh, sit deep in our hearts. I was I was disappointed that you went to the goth weekend in Whitby and wore your obligatory jumper and shirt. I felt like that would have been an opportunity to put a bit of leather on. Well, well oh. watch out for next time. Oh, heck. Um, this, yeah, um, hopefully next year we'll be in the van. We did buy outfits and you will be pleased to know, Chris, there was no leather involved. Oh. What happens in the van stays in the van is what I've been talking about all you lot on these channels. Um, so... Uh, Rachel. YouTubers. Yeah. Obviously, guys, Generation X, we keep missing you. But next year, we'll find you. We will <laughs> come and see you. Trust me. We just love meeting everybody, don't we, David? Yeah. It's just such a great community and everybody supports each other. So if you're in the area that we're in, pop us a line. We'll come and say hello. Yeah. And we'll definitely have to catch up with you guys next year. And you join me with David and Rachel sitting on the fence here, not telling anybody <laughs> who their favourite YouTubers are. <laughs> Jeez. Right, on right. to the next one, which is from Elvis the Eldest, a CV40. Hi, David, Rachel and Roxy. Questions for your upcoming vlog, if applicable. So there's there's quite a few questions here. I'm going to read them because they're on the screen here. Uh, yeah. But then we'll break them down. And I think we've got well-placed people here to answer all of those for you. Uh, Elvis the Eldest, a CV40. First one, which is, uh, what's the best mod you've done on your van, both physically and financially? I think the best mod has definitely been the lithium setup and reason being is we have power whenever, wherever and it's really good. Price wise, I think cost was in there as well, wasn't it? I still love the um, sink top that was made into the table. We have actually changed it since, but that was just, that was already included in the van and it just needed a leg on, loved it. Worst thing about the camper van, the washroom, get tangled in a curtain and stuff, and yeah, I would change that. I think we will do as well. I see yeah. another David video coming along here. <laughs> yeah. So let's go on to another part of the question here. Um, I mean, David, you do a lot of the mods. Um, you enjoy the tech side yeah. of this, which I think fascinates a lot of people. I know you get asked a lot of questions, actually. Yeah. I've, I've noticed that you, you know, people come to you asking yeah. for advice. So what do you think is the best mod that you've done? Favourite mod, and it was quite a simple one, and it was installing the blind spot detection um, system because fairly simple one to do. 
wasn't vastly expensive. It means probably a third or less of the cost of buying one coming with it. But actually it keeps an eye out that no one's at the side of the van. Because you do get a little bit of a blind spot in places and it's just it's just looking out for you. you know, what would you change on the van? And, and I guess, would you ever consider a self-build or a custom build? The washroom we would change and David does have plans mm. to do something. Would I consider a self-build? Originally, the plan was to do a self-build. I think you've got to know your limitations. And the thing I'm not great at is the carpentry. But at some point in time, I'd like to find someone to work with to actually do the bits I'm not so good at and then actually bring to life something. It's about creating that, that vision at the right point in time. And I, and I think tech-wise, it would be better than the Starship Enterprise. Oh. I think there'd be more screens, buttons. Yeah. Okay, on we go with the next question. Uh, and this one is from uh, Violet Violet Two 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 on Instagram. Question is: Hi David, Rachel, and Roxy. You put a video up of you installing a blind spot sensor. Oh, we've had a question oh. about this. This is good. Yeah. Um, and I've been wondering how you've been getting on with it, and would you recommend? Absolutely, would recommend. It's been absolutely cracking. I had one small issue where I've just held off a little bit. Where one time it was kind of false bringing up uh, as if there was something there but I washed the back of the van off and I don't know if there was some kind of metal filings or something in the muck that had gone up the van but uh, abs other than that it's been absolutely spot on it just gives you that notification when someone's at the side of you so absolutely would recommend it and we will follow up with a video on that one albeit it's quite a pain to film well, we're cracking on with our Christmas uh, jumpers and our Christmas themed van and some more questions. This isn't a question about Christmas, but it is a question that I think is, is quite relevant, uh, especially if you're fairly new to the industry. So a question from Chris in the East Riding of Yorkshire. Chris, you have a wonderful name. Um, I think you should congratulate the uh, parents for that one. A question I always ask myself, when you plug in on hookup, why, when you've invested so much in an off-the-grid system, do you pay for hookup on site? Just so I know before I invest in similar off-grid upgrades. Thank you. Looking forward to the video. That's from Chris. For us, it was about options. Sometimes we go away and we want to go to a site, and sometimes we go away and we don't want to go to a site or we want to go to a festival or something like that. The main thing it doesn't do is heating, either water or space heating. And we don't really want to burn fossil fuels unless we can help it. Sometimes there's no option because there isn't any other way to do it. But if we're on a site and it's got electric, we'll typically use it, especially in the winter uh, when we want to keep the uh, keep the van warm. Thank you, David. And a special mention to the person on one of your most recent videos who left three pound in the... Uh, oh, that was brilliant. Well, it's, that was it's cracking. twice that's happened. We had it, it happen at Hodham and at Thorpe Farm. Yeah. So please, guys, please... It, it, it's like the gift that keeps giving and we hope we get some more of those. Yeah. Especially when they've lowered the price of the pictures as well. Brilliant. Yeah, I'm sure the next one we'll have to pay for, but cracking. Imagine the look of joy he gets when he finds a pound down the back of the sofa. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to the next one. It's an Instagram question. It comes from Where's Wanda Wandering. Hi, David, Rachel and Roxy. Here's a couple of questions. Number one, what would you change on your motorhome? And number two, what accessories would you not be without... She said it's a couple of questions, it's three. <laughs> Jill, <laughs> it's a couple is two, not three. Three, what's the best place you've camped? Well, thankfully, we've answered that one. So first question, David and Rachel, what would you change about your motorhome? Washroom, yeah, but I'd also love um, a light bar or some lights on the front, just because the headlights are a little bit dim on the night, so it'd be cracking to have one of those, so we'll get on to that. And Rachel, what accessory would you not be without? Oh, this one's quite easy, the crimpit. <laughs> I love oh, the perfect for snacks, aren't they? <laughs> Can't whack a crimp it. Quick story, I, I um, asked these two last year, they had crease release, the spray, mm -hmm. and um, I was like, they're really, that's fantastic, does it really, do you not have to iron? Next thing I know, Santa's elves brought uh, uh, um, some, some crease release round. <laughs> I've never had a crimping before, actually. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> On to the next one from Little Fella. Um, it says, hi, Roxy, Rachel and David. I see they, uh, as a dog lover, judging by the Absolutely. Instagram picture. Yeah, Little uh, Fella. Put the most important yeah. person first, which is Roxy. Oh, Roxy, it's Little Fella. What's your favourite go-to meal that you, this is a good one, that you cook in your van? What's your favourite method, i.e. air fryers? barbecue, gas stove or George Foreman and have a great Christmas. Well, you have a great Christmas too. So for me, it's uh, cooking breakfast outside. 
I like watching um, you do that. Can, yeah. um, can't whack breakfast, uh, uh, best meal of the day. The crimpet, obviously, because I <laughs> love the crimpet. Yeah. This show is not sponsored by crimpet, by the way, just, just <laughs> you know, just to be clear. Yeah. And we do like things like fajitas, etc., and the kadak, yeah. don't with we? Lasagnas we st we've done as well. Really? Yeah. yeah. I think you do seem to eat out a lot, quite a lot. We, we do, to be honest, we're really naughty on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on to the next question, which is from Daniel, and it's, what's the best improvement that you've made on your camper van, and what's the best gadget you have to have with you when you're on the road? So the best improvement, uh, I think we covered the lithium setup. Yeah. Um, but just generally a little bit of personalisation here and there. The table's great. It's just kind of making it really practical and things like that. Fitted a table at the front, table at the back here, and we've got a freestanding table. Just works really well. Boring, I know, but very handy. Coffee maker, you like that? Coffee maker's fantastic as well with the old slide out. Can't beat that. <laughs> Have we got time for me to ask a quick question? Yes. yes. And I haven't told David, Rachel or Roxy, although Roxy's asleep now, so... <laughs> there's two, there's kind of two parts of it, really. But yeah, first part is, um, what's the plans for next year? And second yeah. part is, how much time does it really take to do a really good channel, an authentic channel that I think you've both done a cracking job of doing? Thank you. We'll do it in reverse. How much time does it take up? And then we'll go to what the plans is to finish off. So the time it takes up varies. It depends what we're doing. Some things don't take too long to do. Other things take quite a while. The hands up sometimes overcomplicate things and they take longer than they should. And sometimes the outcome's not what you'd expect for the effort that you put in as well. Generally spend probably a day a week on top of what we kind of do out and about mm. beyond the holiday or the break or the doing stuff actually doing bits and pieces such as editing also try and spend a bit of time each week to try and learn something new as well and what's the plans for next year rachel have you got any exciting ideas and thoughts for what you want to do with the channel next year i am going to be doing some extra bits and bobs next year i really enjoyed going to the motorhome show this year so i'm going to be doing some extra looking at that as most people know i didn't participate in the purchase of this van therefore i don't really know what else there is out there and actually i love this van i love it is there something else? I don't know. I haven't explored them. So I'm going to be doing quite a bit of looking about with my eye on the future. I'm looking to get back into why I started the channel in the first place. Now, I'm not going to go into it all here because you'll see it evolve over time. And also, as soon as you say something, you jinx it. What I'm looking to do is get back to doing some more tech stuff, trying to bring something which brings multiple things together, gives you a better experience than what we're doing today. There'll be lots more adventures and things like that because they form part of this bigger picture. Keep watching the channel and you'll see what it's what it's up to. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, how about that? It's like EastEnders, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a, a, it's so anyway, um, let's let's round it up by saying thank you to everybody who who sent in a question. Yeah, um, thank you. Thank you so much. I think it's really important really to you know this for you both. You know, we've spoken about it. Is yeah. is the interaction you love? And I see you respond yeah. to pretty much every comment, if not every comment. We that we, comes we in. do our best to respond to every, every comment. We we love your comments. We love your feedback. So please keep it coming. I think if somebody gives us the time to watch our videos and put a comment we owe it to that person exactly. to respond yeah. back yeah. so we'll we'll round it off there and i'll hand over to uh, david and rachel from uh, leisure bit for their usual way of finishing a video so we wish you a fantastic christmas and new year thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed it and we'll catch you on the next one bye, bye. Uh, we wave bye bye <laughs> 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 let's go let's go right Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Uh, we didn't say Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> one last go then. Yeah. We did that the you first win. time.